In questo video vi presento. In this video we will be introducing you to the Walker devices in the Optima line. We have braces of a different height with different structures to manage different pathological contexts. The characteristics common to all of our braces are the thermomoldable heel counter, a fully rocking anti-torsion, anti-flexion sole and a breathable upper. Now let's go take a look one by one. Optima Diab is the brace that changed the international guidelines. It's a high brace with the possibility of being made non removable. We have Optima Cleheal, which is the ideal brace for the management of heel injuries. We have the Optima Post Op, Ankle Eye Walker, which is ideal for the management of vascular lesions. There is the Optima Europa, which is a slightly shorter brace than Optima Post Op, ideal for the management of surgery of the forefoot and interdigital lesions. And finally, we have Optima Free, the ideal brace for the management of dorsal lesions, thanks to its feature of being able to remove the front velcro strap. In this video, we will look at how to apply and adapt the Optima Diab and Optima Cleal on patients. Optima Diab was used to produce clinical evidence that led our field to consider the knee eye walker rendering removable the gold standard therapy for the management of a neuropathic plantar lesion. In the first of our two cases, we are dealing with a patient with a ulcerated plantar lesion in the area of second metatarsal head. It is a neuropathic lesion, therefore reducing pressure is the primary goal. To create effective offloading therapy, it is essential to accurately identify the location of the ulcerated area during gain development. For this purpose, we cover the lesion with a transparent sterilized film and we mark the lesion with lipstick or a marker pen. We place the foot inside the brace, making sure to bring the heel into contact first and then the forefoot. Then we fasten the velcro straps to secure the device to the leg. We ask the patient to walk a few steps so that the surface area in contact with the foot will be marked around the ulcerated area. When removing the walker device, the imprinting left by the lipstick on the plantar surface is clear and this is the area where we need to reduce pressure by creating the offloading hole. Kit 3x3 is the name of the modular plantar interface we use in our worker devices. These are three layers, each a different color representing a different degree of hardness and density. A stiffer blue layer, an intermediate beige layer and a softer red layer. Each one distinguishes between three parts of the foot, forefoot, midfoot and rear foot. We mark the perimeter of the impression with a pen, adding a margin from about 5 mm up to about 10 mm in the distal area. To remove this part, we use a scalpel, placing the blade at around 45 degrees. There are three rules to always bear in mind when it comes to the composition of the kit 3x3. The offloading hole must never be in direct contact with the lesion. The patient's weight is very important. Above 90 kg, the offloading hole must be carved out of the blue layer. Under 90 kg, as in the case of our patient here, the offloading area must be cut out of the beige layer. Finally, only the red layer can be in direct contact with the injury. In this case, it's the forefoot. The advantage of having a modular system such as Kit 3x3 is the opportunity to vary the composition horizontally, to enhance the relief on the part affected by the injury and increase the compression on the remaining parts. If the foot is particularly deformed and rigid, it is possible to extend the offloading hole in the lower layer to increase the capacity of the kit to promote relief from pressure. We first dress the patient's foot by protecting the interdigital space with a cotton gauze, then apply a bandage with a cotton roll and cohesive bandage from the base of the toes to 2 cm to the popliteal area. An extensible, seamless cotton sock is supplied with SBI products to protect 
the dressing by limiting tension on the skin as much as possible. After finishing the dressing, we insert the kit 3x3 into the walker device and place the patient's foot inside it, making sure that the entire surface of the foot is well positioned within the Eva lining. In this second case, let's see how to apply and adapt optimally heal to the patient. Here we are faced with an ulcer near the posterior lateral tuberosity of the calcaneus. Here too we proceed with the application of the dressing, the bandage and of the protective stocking. Since the lesion is not on the plantar surface, optimally ill is recommended because, thanks to its posterior opening, it allows for the placement of the lesion while eliminating any type of contact between the brace and the ulcer. In accordance with the recommendation 8 of international guidelines, optimally ill is a high brace that enables an effective reduction of pressure on the heel. Not only does the AFO structure have a rear opening, but a further advantage of the optimally ill is that the back of the brace can be cut, transforming into a two shell structure. This feature is strongly indicated when managing patients with a very bulky calves. We will check upon the patient on a weekly basis until healing is achieved. Certainly, is likely to achieve this result in the shortest possible time thanks to the evidence supporting the effectiveness of optimal worker devices.